Okay, so I'm going to create a desert sunset for this painting tutorial. I've opened an A4 canvas in Procreate, and you can see here I've got a color palette pre-selected. I'm just going to show you how you can replicate the same colors on your painting if you want to have a go. So you can see here I've got them selected. Each one of these colors has a hexadecimal code attached to it. So if you see if I click on the color, you can see all the different levels that are relevant to that color, and it's got its own specific code. So I'm going to put that code down in the, the uh, description of the video. So all you need to do is take a note of that, come into this section on the color wheel. So if you go on the colors, along to the value section, type in the code, press return on the keyboard, and then it should put the color there for you. And then all you need to do is just go to the color palette wherever it needs to be, and you can select it like that. So on my first layer, now I've got the colors in this order and it's specific to the, the order that I'm, I'm likely to paint it in. And I've got the codes down in the order that they are presented here as well. So the first color that's on the color palette, I'm going to use as a general background color. Now you can manually paint it in and another quicker way is perhaps just to drag it from the color and drop it into there. So I'll just recap that. If you go onto the color that's represented in the circle in the far right corner, just tap on it, drag it over instantly and it will flood the whole layer with that color. So that is going to be my base color. I'm going to then create another layer and I'm going to work on top of that with the different color schemes now. I will highlight which color I'm using at any particular point. I am going to use the next color along here. And I'm going to use this to give me a sense of where the horizon line is going to be. Okay, so there will be lots of other colors in this area, so I'm not too fussed about filling in the rest of it just yet. I'm going to create another layer. On this layer, I'm going to use the next color along. So you can see this is much more towards the blue and it's a darker version of that. So it's more saturated and more black in it too. So on this different layer, I'm still using the soft airbrush. I'm using the soft airbrush for all of this painting. People often ask me which brushes I, I use. And I usually state it and usually it is just the soft airbrush. I'm more concerned in, in getting across the structure of paintings rather than the textures because I, I tend to paint them zoomed out like this, so you can't even see the textures very clearly anyway. If you can understand how to structure the painting, then you can play around with textures yourself and see what works best for you. So it could be that you use some of the more artistic sort of brushes, um, but I just like to simply use the airbrush, especially when it comes to giving smooth transitions and sort of blends between different tones. So I could do that manually, in fact, with the airbrush, but a, a quicker, a bit of a cheap, quick way of doing that seeing as I'm only on a layer that's got that particular detail and I can also use the Gaussian blur. So I'm going to blur it slightly and it just blends it in, smooths it in, so really you don't have to do it manually at all. So I'm still going to concentrate on the sky, so I'm going to create another layer, go to my colours and I've got a dark sort of bluey colour here but I'm just going to skip along from that for now. I will come back to that and use it but that's going to be the last uh, layer, that the last colour I add to the clouds really. And that will represent the more foreground sort of clouds, the nearest one that will appear darker in the sky. But before that, I'm going to start representing some more broken texture in the sky itself. So the sun is going to be in this area and there is going to be a lot of warmth and light coming from that particular area of the picture. But obviously it's going to hit certain banks of clouds and they're going to be more illuminated as a result. So I'm just creating a bit of texture, some uneven lines that cut across the sky. Turn the opacity down and then really you're not going to get any sudden marks and really you can do this in a soft, more gradual way, which is ideal. So as it gets closer or further up, in the sky, then this is actually going to represent the, the nearest clouds. That's generally the way it goes. The closer to the horizon, the more distant the clouds typically will be. And the closer to the top of the picture, they're going to be more foreground clouds. So the more foreground clouds, you will notice a little bit larger shapes. I might have overdone it there slightly, but you'll notice more irregular shapes. As it gets more towards the horizon, those banks of clouds will typically flatten out for the distant clouds anyway. 
like I say, when it comes down to this area, you're going to get more sort of broad stripes that cut across. We have a couple more up here as well. Probably going to add a lot more warmth on top of this layer, but I just need to get a sort of a background sense of where some of the stripes and stuff belong. Like so. So I'm going to move along, like I say, to this, the warmer colour that I've here. That is a very sort of salmony colour. I'm going to use that to go over some of this. No, I was considering another layer. I might keep it on the same layer. It doesn't really make much of a difference. So if you really wanted to, you could separate every single stage out into different layers. It's up to you. But this is largely the same sort of area. So I'm going to keep it as well just one layer in this instance. So I'm, I'm not really pressing on hard with this. If I pressed on hard, you'd get a much more intense. I'm using the pressure sensitivity of the Apple Pencil just to, and also the low opacity here. But if you try and replicate the level of opacity and you're pressing on too hard, you will see it very distinctly. And I'm going to have some intensity in this area, but I'm just starting to build it up more gradually first. Prefer to have a little bit of patience and just spend some time with the piece. Sometimes if, you, if you're gonna, rush out things you you're not going to enjoy the results and really i think if you're not going to enjoy the process and take your time with it then i'm not sure what the purpose of it is really i'm going to pick an area here so i've already decided this is going to be like the a low lying perhaps mountains perhaps bank of cloud sometimes you get a, a strip of cloud that you know you can see the sun in between i think i may have another bank of cloud in this area actually and maybe i'll use this for the the sun to be peeping over the landscape I'm just going to intensify it in this area and press it on a bit more. Still keeping it on a low opacity, just pressing on a bit more for this region. And without a great deal of extra detail or effort, you can really start to get a sense of where the light source is emanating from now. I'm going to turn the size of the brush up just to give it a more of a, a radiant kind of circle in this area. Perhaps that's just a bit too much. I'll turn the opacity down. That will do. And then I'm going to move along to the yellow colour. I'm just going to use this. I will probably later on change this slightly, but I just want to get some of the intensity of light in to the right location. It's really going to help me gauge how the rest of the picture is working. So I'm just going to put the intensity of the yellow in there to begin with. I will go back over this and refine it, like I say. But I think just to make it clear to yourself where the light is actually coming from will will help make sense of the rest of the landscape. I'm also going to use this real lighter yellow colour. There is a white, which I may use just as a, a spot of white right near the end on the sun. But to be to be honest, the actual very, very pale yellow colour is almost white anyway. And it's probably pale enough, but we'll see. So that's going to give me the location of the sun. And I'm going to later on just go back. So that's too white really for what my purpose is there. I will have to use the yellow, go back over this. But I'm going to start to move to the rest of the landscape first and then I'll come back to that and add more refinement. But before I go on to the actual land, I'm going to move backwards. I did say that there was going to be some more foreground textured clouds using this dark blue. And I will create this on a separate layer actually. I'm just going to gradually, with a different kind of gesture, maybe turn the brush size down slightly, turn the opacity up. This, I suppose, in a way is slightly more sharp in focus. It is more foreground. Remember this is a darker blue than the dark blue that was up there. So even when a blue can, or a color can seem quite intense, a feature like a cloud that is a like kind of creating a shadow in, this, in the sky will be just a touch darker. So I'll probably go back into the cloud area later on in the painting and add a bit more refinement to it, but I'm going to leave it at that point for now. It's going to give me a context for the landscape. So if I start on a separate layer, I'm going to go to my colors and I'm going to start with this particular line of colors now. Now this is going to be one of the main colors I use in the, the actual land itself. Now there's a lot more purple, a lot warmer range of colors that I'm going to use for the actual uh, the ground, actual land in the landscape. But I'm going to start to build it all gradually, so turn the opacity quite low down. You can see it stands, stands out quite clearly. But I'm just going to be uh, gradual in the way that I start to introduce it. So again, I'm using the pressure of the Apple Pencil, pressing on a bit more lightly in the, the distance. So I'm already creating a bit of layers and texture. 
and then probably it's going to sweep up a little bit more towards this end of the picture and I may even use a darker colour over the top of this but maybe it just sweeps up in this area. I might just turn the size of the brush up and just fill in some of this. Now it's going to have a different colour scheme beyond this point anyway but if I just get rid of the, the base colour I think perhaps it's going to help visualise the, the sky as being something different from the land. I'm going to create another layer and on this layer I'm going to use the slightly darker you can see it's slightly more towards the blue than the previous colour and it's a it's a darker version as well so what I'm going to start doing is using this colour just to really pick out some of these forms a bit more clearly maybe just sharpen my brush up a little bit so I can get a bit more precise I'm going to add some slightly distant sort of sand dunes some sort of spikes and features in the landscape So there isn't going to be much of this colour left at this top area here, just a little bit, but it's still going to have an impact. And then this will be form the kind of base colour for certain areas in the sand dune, but it's, it's an important, it has an important influence on the scene, even if you don't necessarily see much of it in certain areas. I'm not going to be too neat in this, I'm just going to let it create textures and blend down a little bit. Okay, if I go along my colours, I've got a lighter colour now, more towards the red, so warmer colours. And I'm gonna, this is the important point where I need to start picking out some of the actual sand dunes, some of the, the lay of the land. And you can see I've got three different types of, of warm colour there, varying in lightness. So I'm gonna start with a darker one, but it's really going to be, by contrast, a lot lighter than the, the background that it's placed in. So I'm just gonna be careful initially, I'm just going to use it to start defining the top of some of the, the mounds and sand dunes because obviously the light's coming from here so it's going to hit uh, and just light up the top of some of the, the shapes in the land. So I think what I'm going to do is have maybe a, a focal point here, one main sort of snaking sand dune where it creates a sort of a snake shape maybe. So you'll see the light hit this angle so it's pointed towards the sun and it's important it gets narrower as it goes off. So I will go back into this area there's going to be if this is sort of coming more into focal point into the foreground I will have to add some texture to the sand there as well. So obviously when the, the sort of the wind will create ripples in the sand itself create texture I'm just trying to plot in the main shapes for now. There may be some other areas along here where the light is hitting the top of more shapes. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly compress this area, bring it down a bit more. And you can see, because I didn't separate the layers, it's created a bit of a, an issue there. So I can just quickly fill that in and disguise that. <laughs> Go back to the layer that I was using. This is the beauty of working digitally is that and, you know, any mistakes are easy to fix, really can give you a lot more confidence to just give it a go, experiment, see what happens. If it doesn't go right, then there's always a way to sort it. The main reason I wanted to just bring this part of the curve down is I wanted, I just suddenly decided I wanted something that goes above it, but I want it to appear more in the distance as well. So again, I'm just considering where the light's coming from, it's going to hit one side of a particular sand dune or mound. So I'm not too sure about these far distant shapes. There might be a suggestion of just a little bit, but they're big features. So what you find is that the, the more foreground features, you're going to see a bigger section of the actual highlight. And something that's very enormous in the distance, you won't actually see the highlight as such a big impacting band. Not quite the same way as you will do on a more foreground detail. Just kind of playing around with some of these shapes, so I don't have an exact idea of what the overall forms are going to be, but I'm just getting a sense for these sort of winding, snaking shapes. A bit like a, almost like a triangular form. It comes up to a mound and hits one side more than the other. I guess when it's something directly underneath the sun, 
it can be a more even spread of light, but anything more towards this side, then you're going to see it impacting on one side of the mound more than the shadow side. Okay, so I'm going to move to the slightly lighter colour. I'm going to use this to help just further define some of the highlights, pick out some of the details. I'm just going to use this darker colour again. I think I want this area to be mainly in shadow, apart from some highlights in that area. So I'm just going to generally darken it up a little bit more. thinking I'd like to create a bit of a shadow here. There is a, like a top edge that will perhaps just create a little bit of a shadow on itself. I'm just adding that in. Maybe just narrow that area down a little bit more. Again, I'm going to use on a slightly lighter color just to bring out top edges. Just going over this area and giving it a bit of a sharp edge on the shadow side. Maybe blend it in a bit more. Maybe this shadow extends a bit too far. Let's just go over that again. Blend it in a bit. And this area is looking too purple, so I'm just using some of this colour to blend it in a little bit more. Some of that purple tone is fine to keep, but it's just looking a bit too vivid. So I'm just going to knock it back a little bit more. Blend it in. Same for this region. I'll just blend it in a bit more with a mixture of this lighter tone and I'm going to use the shadow as well just to start to uh, again add a bit more texture in here but a, bit of a variety of colour and tone. So I have created a, a, a quite crisp shadow here but I think perhaps there should be a little bit more noise and disruption even within the shadow so I don't want to make it just a totally flat area so I'm just going back over it with a slightly lighter purple just to disrupt it so it still has a, a neat edge but i just want to make it slightly less dead looking less flat okay i'm going to now, now create another layer and on this layer i'm going to start adding some ripples into the the actual sand so the real fine ripples that you'd see close up so i'll start off with lines that are, are curves there might be another one but they're not going to go all the way across they're going to be sort of stripes that hug quite close together perhaps you might get a sort of descending or a, a chain of waves that all fit together. And there might be another one that links in. Another one here that maybe goes over the top of those. You just got to uh, see what works, I think. Like I say, you don't just want a stripe that goes a continuous line. They are a bit more broken than that. Less so perhaps when you get further in the distance, but certainly the more foreground ones where you really see them close up, you'll see that not every single line is a continuous form. I'm only going to do it on one edge. This is the focal point, this is curving round, so you can really get a good look at the, the texture. You know, On some scenes, I guess you might see more of the ripples across the whole scene, but I'm just going to really focus here. It'll give you the sense of it, give you a sense of what you're actually looking at. So just a hint of it should be enough for your imagination to fill in the blanks of the rest of the, the scene, hopefully. And I think that is a very important technique sometimes. Sometimes you get paintings, works of art, where the artist has gone into an incredible amount of effort to put in every tiny little detail that the eye could possibly see. But then other times, like the Impressionists, it's enough just to suggest. Personally, I like to you know, sort of find a middle ground with that. I'm probably more inclined to go into too much detail typically, but having said that, there comes a point at which actually even you, you, your eye wouldn't see some of the details in the far distance anyway, so there's no point endlessly zooming in and, and refining something that naturally your eye wouldn't see. So again, I'm just redefining this edge a little bit. I don't want to create an extra line cutting across, but I'm just trying to separate the general block of tone from this area. And I may even add a, a bit of a stripe of a highlight along that line just to redefine it as well. So I'm going to put more stripes in, maybe turn the size of the, the brush down a little bit more for the distant or more distant stripes, ripples. So I'm prepared to put in the time to create quite a few stripes in this area. So it doesn't take too much just to add a few stripes here, but it will really just, this bit of work will will help the imagination fill in the rest. So. so 
and I've got a general sense of the ripples. I'm just going to spend a bit of time maybe darkening up them in certain areas, especially the foreground ones. You're going to see some darker tone. Typically in a landscape, you get the darkest tones when you get closer to. So like I say, I'm just using the bit of the darkest tone just to really exaggerate some of the closest ripples. And I'm going to use the highlight, the lightest color on the second row. And I'm going to use that just to maybe just create a highlight along the edge of some of those ripples. In fact, I'm going to reduce the size of the brush. I'm not going to zoom in for this. I'm going to try and do all of it zoomed out. But I'm, all, well, I'm really focused on the effects rather than getting every detail looking as intricate. If I was doing my own painting, then believe me, I would be zooming in more. But for the benefit of the tutorial on camera, I'm trying to avoid doing that. But I'm just about the structure and the effect. And then if you want to zoom in and perfect things, then that is a choice beyond that. So like I say, I'm just taking, I've got the dark stripe, then the, the paler area and the front edge of that paler area. I'm just adding a bit of a highlight in certain areas mostly and use the, the lighter color that was the highlights. It's probably enough for this area. So again, I'm just going to perhaps just go and sharpen up this edge as well. I want it to be really crisp here. Maybe just give it a slight hint of a line that cuts through in places. Just the top edge of that line will just hit the light. I'm going to move to, in fact, one of the warmer colours that would be normally in the sky. Like I said, these are, this is generally the colours I'm going to use but I'm swapping them around a little bit more. And I want some of that warmth coming down from the clouds and I want it sort of affecting here a little bit more actually. But I'm not happy with the texture of that. I'm just gonna do it a bit more gradually. Now I could edit out all the little mistakes that I make along the way, but I think it's quite useful for people just to see that nobody's painting goes perfectly. It's about recognizing when something isn't working and then adjusting it accordingly. If you can master that and not give up and not be deflated by any errors that you make along the way, then I think that's one of the most important lessons that you can, you can take away from this really. So I'm just going to return to the sky for a short while. I may well come back to the landscape and refine it a little bit more, but I just feel like I want to go back to the sky at this point, do some amendments there, probably create another layer. I'm going to put it in the, along with the other sky layers, but it doesn't really matter. I could have put it on top. I'm going to use the yellow. I'm going to reduce the size of the brush and I'm just going to take that yellow and extend it beyond. So it's hitting, in my imagination, it's hitting the, the banks of clouds and it's just illuminating the edges of it, maybe the land as well. So I'm going to just, I've created a bit of the, the salmon highlights. I'm just going to just blend in the yellow a little bit. So it's about the combination of the two colours. The yellow on its own wouldn't be right and the salmon colour on its own wouldn't be right, but the two together is the effect that I'm after. I'm going to create another layer, but I'm going to put it under the other sky layers, in fact. And using the salmon sort of colour, I'm going to put a bit more of the impact of that light. The reason I put it underneath is that I wanted to fill in a large area there without actually interrupting and disturbing the highlight of the sun. So all the colours above the sun now, I'll just move it so you can see, is above. And I'm using a layer underneath. So you can see I've extended the, the warmth underneath without affecting the the layer which is now actually above and contains the, the sun itself. So I'm going to extend some of that warmth across a bit more. I'm going to go back on the layer that I've been applying a darker, more foreground sort of detailed cloud. I'm going to start doing some more of that in there as well. Again, turn the brush size down. I'm just going to apply this in sort of blobs to begin with. It's going to be less stripy, like some of the more distant banks of clouds, these are going to be more textured, perhaps between the far distant clouds and these ones, there's the middle distance ones maybe. So I'm going to do them slightly paler, not quite as intensely dark 
as these ones up here. If you find that the intensity is getting a bit too much, you can always just use the eraser and knock it back. You know, use a combination of both applying and removing. You can also use the smudge tool. I've got that on the medium brush and you can use that. Perhaps that's a bit too strong actually. Turn the strength of the brush down and you can just sort of blend some of those in if you don't like some of the textures. If you want to soften the impact of it at all. Again, so I'm going to go to one of the previous layers. I'm going to go to this layer and I'm going to use, again, one of the lighter colours of the clouds. I'm just going to use this to maybe just pick out the underside of some of these darker clouds a little bit. And just generally some more stripes and features in this area. Again, I'm going to go back to the salmon kind of colour. I'm going to just use that to maybe pick out some features off on the edges of the landscape as well. Again, I can blend it in with some of the, the lighter colours. So again, it's the combination of things mixing together. It's not one colour for each area of the piece. It could be the two mixing together instead. Just sharpening up the edge there a little bit. So on this top layer now, I'm just going to sharpen up some of the, the details, just like I do with the sky. It could be pushed even further if I was going to zoom in into those kind of details. I really could sharpen up even more, but I've just, I'm happy with the, the level of detail for a zoomed out view of the sky. But I'm just going to further refine just a little bit more on these sort of areas. That's not the right colour. So again, I'm on need to be on the sand colours. In fact, I may select a colour from near the sun. So it's not going to be this time. In fact, I may add it there. So you can see it's a mixture of some of the different colours. It's not one that I had pre-selected, but sometimes as you go along, you want to take a colour that's up there and maybe just bring it down into the, the actual landscape as well. Because anything that's going to be immediately under the, the sun is perhaps going to have a bit more of the colour of the, the actual sun as well. I will add this colour to the hexadecimal codes, even though it wasn't part of my original plan to use it, but I will add it in the list as well. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for this particular tutorial. If you want to see more tutorials like this, please make sure you press the bell notification button next to the subscribe button. And if you want to check out my Patreon page, there is a link for that down in the description as well. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people that have already shown me support on my Patreon page. It really is massively motivating, really encourages me to do more of this kind of thing. I hope this has been uh, helpful. Please leave me some suggestions in the comment section. Maybe I'll take one of these suggestions and do a future tutorial based on that. Thanks very much for watching. I shall catch you back here again. See you later.